Hey guys, welcome back to another review. And this is actually gonna be of the HyperX Fury S mouse pad. Um, honestly, there's probably been hundreds, if not thousands of reviews on this pad. Uh, but really the question that we're gonna be talking about is whether or not pads like this and cloth pads that are purchasable in big box stores like the SteelSeries QCK Heavy, the Corsair MM300 and the HyperX Fury S are still viable today with all of the mouse pads on the market. I mean, there are so many pads on the market now. Um, you know, really, it's uh, become a question of what are the differences between the pads? Um, is it really preferential for competitive gaming purposes to have a hybrid pad or a control pad, a control cloth pad, or a speed cloth pad? Or is a uh, hard pad better than a cloth pad? I mean, there's so many options. There's glass, there's hybrid, there's Cordura, there's cloth, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. And I think that for anybody on the market for a mouse pad that is on a budget, the HyperX Fury S is still, in my opinion, a fantastic option uh, for a balanced uh, control pad, I would say. Uh, for both competitive Apex and Valorant and Warzone. And guys, it goes without saying, I've tried a lot of pads. I've got the Esports EBA, I've got the Esports Grandmaster, I've got the MPC 890 by Endgame Gear, I've got the Gigantus V2 Custom, and I've got the Glorious 2XL. I've tried the Artisan Shudenkai, I've tried the Artisan Hien, I've tried the Artisan Raiden, and the list goes on and on and on. And a drawer full of pads on pads on pads on pads on pads. So I think really the question is with all of these options from Artisan, from Esports Tiger, and from all of the various different brands, um, are the differences really that noticeable in competitive games at a competitive level? And my answer is simply no. I think the idea of these mouse pad tier lists are um, really just a not so good way to uh, present mouse pads to the consumers. I don't think that if you're using a HyperX pad, um, that necessarily means that you're going to be playing any worse than somebody on an Artisan pad. You know, you've got Artisan that's clearly the highest quality mouse pad, and you've got your typical cloth mouse pads. I picked this up for 20 bucks in Best Buy. And <clears throat> I, I can say that for a cloth pad, it's got a very very nice blend of balance and i think that i could play at a uh, at my normal uh, high tier competitive level in both valorant and apex and to prove my point i've got clips here both in a just a valorant deathmatch um, and uh, uh, some apex pubs Carry, guys. 
So for me as a predicate, just to let you all know, um, you know, what I look for in a pad is good balance between speed and control. I don't want to be too fast and have my micro movements, you know, slightly miss somebody's head by this much in Valorant or CSGO. Um, and I also don't want my pad to be muddy for tracking purposes in Apex. Um, you know, you all have seen my gameplay throughout my various videos and Apex uh, Legends is my main game. Um, you know, I hit Predator, I hit Masters last season um, because I, you know, I just simply don't have enough time anymore to grind to Predator. Um, and I can say that this pad would be no issue for me in climbing from Masters to Apex and it would have uh, no difference in my playstyle whatsoever as far as my initial climb to Masters. And as far as um, micromanagement in Valorant, I think that it really does have a very good balance between speed, uh, accuracy, and control. And to prove my point, I'll show you guys just a few clips from uh, Valorant Deathmatch. <laughs> So really guys, I do think that there is some credence to having a mouse tier list as far as quality issues are concerned, but at the end of the day, you can't individually place something subjectively in an S tier or a A, B, C, D tier and have a pad like this, which is uh, what I've noticed consistently in D tier uh, mouse tier lists. Um, I think it's kind of insane to me uh, because a lot of players need individually different things for their competitive play, okay? Um, if I'm an over-aimer, I want a more controlled pad. If I am less able to manage my micro movements on that control pad, I might need a balanced pad. Um, so while pads like this may have a degradation in the surface material over time, um, this could potentially be somebody's top tier gaming mouse pad, right? Because it has a very good balance of speed and control. It is a very balanced pad and the micro movements are actually very controlled compared to most mouse pads. Um, somebody at a pro level might not have that same functionality with going to any one of the artisan pads. Um, so I, I think that mouse tier lists are kind of hogwash and I think that you individually as a player um, there could be some credence into going into aim labs or um, one of the other aim trainers to see and test your scores on some mouse pads to see whether or not you are better with some control or some speed. Um, but be careful with aim trainers as well and paying attention to your scores. You know, the, the number one thing that you can do is go into your game of choice that you are trying to excel at and climb that ranked ladder. Um, and test out the pads in a deathmatch. If you're noticing that you're over aiming with micro movements or you need some more flick power, make those adjustments and look at the mouse pads and try to make an assessment based off your own individual play, not anyone's mouse tier list, um, to make your own assessment into what pad might work for you. And to get into the integrity and uh, quality of the mouse pad itself. The stitched edging that HyperX has provided has actually always been a high quality stitched edging. Um, it is barely lifted off uh, height wise from the pad itself. The logo of HyperX is not raised from the mouse pad itself. And uh, overall the cloth material is I would say probably one of the higher end materials or surfaces that you can find uh, in big box stores. It is a desk uh, size mouse pad at 900 by 420 millimeters at a price of only $20. And it is, I believe, a uh, four millimeter pad with uh, actually very adequate padding at uh, four millimeters. And a close up of the material and glide with the hyperlides. And the difference between the HyperX cloth and the NPC Endgame Cordura.
and a, another new cloth pad that I'm trying, the Esports Grandmaster next to the HyperX Fury S. So guys, I'm certainly not going to say that this is the highest quality mouse pad on the market because it's certainly not, right? But when it becomes an issue of will you play better on a S tier mouse pad that's $100 or more, or a D tier mouse pad on most mouse lists um, for $20, are you going to see a significant improvement or decrease in your gameplay? And I think that the answer is most certainly not. Uh, mouse pads are a very individual thing and based on your grip and play style, you may need a balance between speed and control or you may need more speed, you may need more control. Um, it all depends. And do I think that the Hyper X Fury S mouse pad is still relevant in 2021? at $20 and being able to just walk into a box where I think that the answer is yes. You might play better on this pad than any other pad in anyone's S tier mouse pad list. Um, so, you know, certainly if you are able to try the pad, um, you know, go for it. If you're looking for a well-balanced cloth pad, uh, this could certainly still be it for you. Um, you know, certainly you may have a better and more enjoyable experience on an S tier mouse pad, um, but you know, make the purchasing decision based on your own individual needs and really analyze your own gameplay style. Um, and you know, if, if this is what you need, give it a try. It's still a relevant mouse pad, but thanks guys for stopping by and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.